podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another CW Group webinar. Thank you so much for joining. I'm Carolina Preira, and this time we would like to take the next 20 to 30 minutes of your time to unveil a selection of highlights of the U.S. fuel market study presented at the CW Summit 2020 held last month in Miami. Uh, as you can see from the title today, we will have a look at fuel status and outlook, fuel grade pet coke trends and opportunities in the Americas. On today's agenda, we would like to start with an introduction first of our company, what it is that we do and what we have to offer. After that, I will share some information about today's presenters. And at last, I will give you an overview of CW's work within the energy sector that, of course, is the focus of today's presentation. After this brief present introduction, we will move on to our, our highlights, fuel status and outlook. Uh, first, a crude oil price analysis, moving on to a, a pet coke market, and uh, then cold market, ending with our closing remarks about the subject at hand. For today, for today's presentation, I would like to introduce my colleague, uh, Prashant Singh, our Associate Director at CW Group. Uh, Prashant is based in Mumbai, and he has worked directly in this product as several years uh, of experience within this, this industry. Of course, myself, Carolina Preira, Manager for Advisory and, and Research at CW Group, as well as my colleague, Juliana Vieira, one of the business analysts that collaborated in the study. We are both based in CW's European branch in sunny Portugal, well, at least for today. <laughs> for those of you who aren't familiar with our company, and for those of you who are, I please ask you to bear with me for the next couple of, of minutes where I explain a bit of what it is that we do. CW Group has more than a decade of market experience. At first, we were uh, dedicated to the cement industry, and that's, of course, uh, what we got known for. But we have been branching out to a multi-industry focus. We work under three different umbrellas, as you can see uh, on this page, advisory, research, and media. So. Under the advisory branch, CW works with major global consultancy and leading institutions, including the World Bank and investment funds. We provide consulting and advisory expertise on a diverse product portfolio. Of course, cement, because as I've said before, this is, was in the beginning and still is one of our core uh, products and knowledge points, but also building materials, chemical products, defense going over paper and pulp, as well as food products, and this at a global level. CW mission, and what we've been doing is helping industry participants on their decision-making process with the ultimate goal of providing the most up-to-date information and the necessary tools to make, of course, our clients grow in the right direction. Counting with our unparalleled network that allow us to reach all corners of the world, as well as with a rich and rigorous methodology that we apply and enforce in all our studies. This, of course, is a very brief summary of our advisory service. Please feel free to contact us. You had our information in our previous page. Uh, feel free, we are here to answer any inquiries. Now, if we move on to the research branch, uh, CW works on an 
very diverse product portfolio, including the energy sector, sector which we will focus on in today's presentation. We provide historical as well as forecasts for markets in various in a variety of products within the cement industry, but not exclusively. Uh, and this includes, of course, one of our main products being the VFR volume forecast report, uh, where we include a, a forecast of what is to come in for the next six months of the year. And this comes in two uh, in, in two installments. Uh, and of course, trade prices report, a quarterly updated report with a forecast when it comes to trade pricing as well as the domestic prices. Complementing these studies, we also do studies on specialty cement, white cement, oil well cement, calcium aluminum cement, going to, of course, other, uh, other products, as I've mentioned uh, several times before. We also provide commodity price assessments for cement, clinker, and also pet coke, which is the subject at hand. Last but not least, under the media umbrella, you, you can have online, online access to our vast database, newsletters with the latest markets updates from production to prices and our latest and newest research insights. Um, this goes in vast, again, product portfolio going from cement, pet, coke, coal, building materials, bulk commodities, and paper and pulp. Uh, I also ask you to stay tuned for future announcements uh, of another installment of CW Summit happening uh, hopefully by the end of the year. And of course, uh, our next supported conference from with GMI Global, Flag and Ice Trade Europe, where I will also be present uh, and presenting some insights on one of our latest, latest reports. Now, and to provide you with a better understanding of what it is that you can expect of CW Group, um, product portfolio, uh, you can see that those are, for example, two um, products that we've selected to show and fall under the subject of energy sec of the energy sector and uh, world coal uh, combustion by products and world green pet cook market demand forecasts are two reports that you can find on our website. I encourage you to click and visit and learn more and ask all the questions that you might have. Uh, now, uh, thank you and for bearing with me in this couple of minutes where I've been presenting our work and our company and we'll move on to the highlights of the report. Now, briefly having a look at the um, cement energy use first at the global and then at, in terms of the U.S. economy, uh, the U.S. market has a preference for coal as an energy source within the cement industry. Uh, and this can be associated and correlated with a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, the country has an intense domestic production, as we all know, which of course makes it for a must, uh, uh, cost competitive advantage. The fact that under the Clear Air Act of the EPA, uh, there are stringent image emissions in terms uh, standards for NOx, of course, also uh, affects pet coke utilization. Within these regulations, only the use of low sul sulfur pet coke is allowed. Uh, being this the more expensive grade of pet coke. When we are comparing pet coke to coal, as we are in, in, in crude oil as well, but those are the two biggest uh, shares uh, on our pie charts, uh, pet coke has a higher calorific value uh, than coal. And even though pet coke is a byproduct of crude oil, 
pet cook price is correlated with coal price because those at the end of the day are the ones that are energy substitutes of each other. In terms of what we can see in the near future and what the next couple of years have in line, we, CW, uh, see that both in the US, but as well as the, in global terms, uh, there's, a, of course, an estimation that the share of the others in this, in this pie chart will most likely increase due to green alternatives like RDF, refuse derived fuels, and MSW, municipal solid waste. For example, major uh, cement producers like Fafajul Sim, Eildeberg, Buzuni Sam, and Samax have stated that almost, we would say, a quarter uh, of their energy use comes from sustainable sources, and this includes uh, alternative fuels. If we now jump for the next slide, we see stability when it comes to crude futures uh, that will set the tone for 2020. The market concerns regarding the global demand are providing a downward pressure on crude oil prices, and this in including the economic outlook for India, for China, and uh, other major country, countries, and this, of course, also could take into account the, the possibility of the impact of reduction, the demand reduction from China, in terms for China as a result of coronavirus. In the past, high U.S. crude oil production, uh, crude oil production and exports have helped supply the global petroleum market and contributed to higher than average inventory levels, levels, levels. In the beginning of January of this year, oil prices spiked after tensions between the US and Iran, lowering right after. The drop in oil prices, of course, always leads to significant revenue shortfalls in many exporting markets. This decline is a result of offsetting upwards and, do and downwards pressures, price pressures. Um, and I mentioned this before, but of course, is the ever-evolving coronavirus impact in terms of the global economy. Now, moving uh, to the and focusing on the America's crude oil refining refining capacity, we can see in our capacity forecasts uh, in our slide that especially in the US and in Canada, the crude oil refining capacity is expected to increase by 2024. This is, of course, is a forecast and we are counting with new cookers may, that may come up, which will, of course, increase the supply of pet coke. Now, thank you so much uh, for your time and attention. I would like to pass the presentation to my colleague, Juliana, uh, that will move on with the coal market overview. Thank you, Carolina. Hello, everyone. I'm Juliana. Now I would like to present the coal market overview. So we will start with the global term of coal consumption. Despite environmental concern, coal is expected to remain a major supplier of energy at a global level in the short to medium term. And this is expected to be boosted by a strong energy demand in markets like China, India and Africa, coupled with resistance in markets like Poland and Australia where they are extremely reliant on this energy source. Now, in the next slide, we can see the main thermal coal exporting markets. Indonesia, Australia, and Russia are the top three coal exporting markets. And the slowing economy growth coupled with the reduced energy intensify of economic activity and the fast 
diversification in rene renewables electricity, uh, reducing China historic depend dependence on coal. So even though the country remains one of the biggest important of the commodity, while India will continue to remain a major import of coal until domestic production is able to meet demand. Now focus on the United States thermal coal. Uh, the exporting price in the country are expected to increase reaching $63.5 per ton in 2024 by a CAG of 2%. The trade deal between China and the US is like to encourage trade on energy products, including coal. However, the total volume of Chinese imports from the US may remain similar or marginally less in 2020 do it to impact on the economic, economic slowdown. And also, the US market has been facing, facing competition from Colombian and Russian coal, in particular Russia, as they have lower sea freight charge. So now I will pass to my colleague, Prashan, to present the next slides. Thank you for your attention. Hello, everybody. Thank you for this. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, and I will now walk you through some of our insights on the pet cook market. So uh, on the next slide, please. Uh, for those who are uh, aware of, of course, pet coke, please bear with me. But for those who want a sort of a uh, more uh, a small detailed understanding of what this product is and why it's such a crucial product for cement, uh, uh, here is a a brief uh, intro. Um, predominantly, um, pet coke is a byproduct of crude, uh, crude oil, uh, and therefore uh, the defining uh, market becomes uh, which country has the highest refining capacity, uh, which is the United States, and also the highest number of cokers, which also coincidentally happens to be the US. So that's why uh, the United States is like the largest source of uh, pet coke uh, globally. Um, there are two kinds of pet cokes, predominantly low sulfur pet coke and high sulfur pet coke. Uh, a low sulfur pet coke is below 3% sulfur uh, and is starting to be the norm in most countries. Uh, the exception uh, which uh, of a country that still allows US, uh, US exports of high sulfur pet coke is India. Uh, even though industry uh, is very strongly in favor of it, uh, it is also still getting intense pressure from uh, the environmental lobby uh, where um, people are concerned about the negative impacts of high sulfur pet coke. So um, even though in the short term, we still see uh, it as an important market, uh, high sulfur pet coke um, in its existent form in terms uh, is likely to face a severe pressure. Uh, why is this such a preferred product by the industry? Well, quite simply because uh, when it's correlated with coal, it has a higher calorific, uh, calorific value. And since it's a byproduct uh, of crude oil, uh, pet coke is actually, uh, the price of pet coke is actually uh, correlated with coal prices. Um, and uh, therefore, uh, uh, users usually interchange between coal and pet coke uh, based on wh whatever is favorable to their mix. Uh, on the next slide, please. So um, here, uh, this is a short uh, overview of where the sector stands. So uh, in 2019, uh, cement uh, or, or fuel grade pet coke accounted for 74% of the market, of which cement accounts for roughly 60%. Uh, we're looking at uh, high sulfur pet coke. Uh, this represents around 60% of the market, followed by mid sulfur pet coke and low sulfur pet coke. Um, China is a market which does import uh, pet coke, but low sulfur or, or uh, only very low sulfur pet coke. The Indian market is one of the few large of large markets in the world where it is still acceptable to import. Uh, high sulfur pet coke. 
uh, currently uh, the U.S. or North America accounts for almost 45% of global pet co-production. Um, And this trend in terms of uh, grade-wise segmentation is likely to alter as we go forward, as even uh, in, in the Indian market, perhaps environmental norms may cause a shift towards medium sulfur uh, over the medium term, um, and, uh, and then gradually towards the norms uh, across uh, the developed world where we see that uh, high sulfur pet coke will no longer be acceptable, but that's over the longer term picture. Um, on the next slide, please. Uh, this is uh, you know, a quick review of the volume of exports. Uh, we have seen ch China, China's imports of US pet coke declining consecutively for years, and this trend uh, continued in 2019, and we do not believe that there is any reason to expect that that trend to sort of either stabilize or marginally increase, uh, decline in 2020. Um, Japan ha has actually picked up some of that slack uh, and has seen uh, its volumes rise, while uh, whereas India has remained a strong importer of uh, US pet coke and is likely to actually further increase, at least in the short term, its consumption. Um, uh, of this product. Uh, uh, in the next slide, please. Um, the, the main driver for this uh, upward revision or upward forecast is going to be uh, the increasing demand from uh, India. However, the, the reason why the, we, we don't forecast a huge price increase is the fact that coal prices are under severe pressure. And since coal prices uh, and pet coke prices are correlated, uh, pet coke prices uh, cannot really sort of exceed a certain limit. So that's why we feel that uh, while uh, the demand is likely to increase, uh, the uh, availability of low priced coal is going to counteract the ability of the, uh, the exporting markets to put uh, a large inc pricing pressure increase, um, at least in this year. And um, that brings us to our final summary. Um, so um, when we look at where we stand in terms of the global fuel market, we see that uh, the pet coke demand, of course, uh, is primarily impacted by demand from India. Um, and the fact that because of its correlation with coal uh, means that even though demand exists uh, uh, and that would normally put pricing pressure, the pricing of coal uh, helps keep pet coke prices in check. Um, over the over the future, uh, over the next few years, domestic coal production in India is forecasted to increase. The previous number that we uh, was expected was in 2021 was a billion, uh, a one a one billion tons, but uh, that target has been pushed back for a few years. Um, but over each uh, each year since 2015 onwards, uh, coal production has actually been increasing. Um, I think to the tune of almost 550 to 600 uh, million tons, but still uh, way short of the thousand, uh, 1 billion tons expected. Uh, if and when uh, India reaches that target, uh, that will have a very big impact on global coal trade as well as pet coke trade, because that will put a uh, tremendous downward pressure on the product prices for these two commodities. Um, when we look at the uh, when we look at crude oil prices, we do expect crude oil prices to remain at a similar level or on a slightly uh, uh, slightly less level, uh, lower level than uh, in 2019, uh, predominantly because the ongoing effects of the coronavirus uh, on a Chinese economic slowdown has not actually been sort of uh, 
taken into account, primarily because the virus's impact is still uh, you know, ongoing and increasing. So the, the quantum of effect uh, on what this will do to Chinese demand uh, for fuel, uh, including coal and pet coke um, and coal, uh, remains to be seen and sort of will be eval uh, you know, e evaluated uh, in the next few months. Uh, but uh, we presume that uh, all things remaining uh, the way they are, uh, these prices will either remain at the level that they were in 2019 or will slightly see a downward pressure. Um, and um, we would like to take this opportunity to sort of update you on this uh, over the next few months as we see the developments taking place and sort of incorporating that in our forecast models. And I would uh, now like to in uh, invite you to sort of join us for our next webinar in a couple of weeks. And uh, feel free to please interact with us on any questions that you may have uh, on our uh, contact information provided to you earlier in the presentation. Uh, I thank you all for taking the time to uh, listen to us. And uh, we look forward to having uh, and to discussing uh, more insights with you in the coming weeks ahead. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.